What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and this year has been full of PR disasters and actors talking down to audiences. And no one exemplifies the culturally out of touch quite like Rachel Zegler has. Recently, Variety has released these long conversations between various actors in the industry. You've probably seen clips of some of them. Anyway, one of these was between Rachel Zegler and Halle Bailey. Two actors who have starred in some mega flops that took the time to talk about their respective franchises and how audiences are hateful towards them. Beyond this, I'll also talk about some other things like how companies have shifted their cultural qualities to pander and much more. So, let's begin. Let's first look at a few articles starting from Bounding Into Comics titled, Rachel Zegler says she's thankful for backlash against her Snow White casting. Nothing can hurt anymore because they've said the worst that they've said. As always, these actors who have been trained within the confines of identity politics never seem to understand their own actions or show any sort of accountability. Instead of just admitting that they were wrong, it's conveniently labeled a life lesson and anything they said was justified because they're from Hollywood. And therefore, they are righteous in everything they pursue. And anyone who dares critique or stand against them is simply spewing hate when in reality, it's the other way around. All of this started from this Variety article titled, Halle Bailey and Rachel Zegler on Becoming Disney Princesses, Singing Live on Set and Blocking Out Toxic Fans, Stay Grateful and Ignore the Hate. Ah, yet again, they never learn, do they? Calling fans toxic is the number one thing you should never do. How many times have I said on this channel that it's never a good idea to attack your audience? Probably a hundred by now. This mentality is what annoys me so much about these overpaid adult pretenders is that whenever they do something that is praised, it's positive. And anything they do that is looked down upon is suddenly due to toxic hate, as if they are incapable of bad decisions or moronic opinions. The PR disaster that is Snow White has been ongoing for months now. The film has been in reshoots constantly, and the film first began as a feminist power fantasy that would replace the dwarves with seven magical creatures, which would all have varying gender identities, which to this day sounds like parody. But when it comes to the things of today, satire has almost lost all meaning since it's borderline impossible to satirize the world of today when reality is so much more bleak and ridiculous on its own already. You have multiple genders and identities being pushed by institutions and schools and things like recently in Doctor Who, where the doctor can now buy regenerate by giving birth to another doctor through their gonads and strife. The nonsense never ends, is what I'm saying. This entire exchange between Rachel and Hallie is akin to two actors just trying to out-nice the other one constantly. And it's also very interesting how different Rachel Zegler conducts herself in this particular interview compared to before. Here, she's all grace and soft-spoken, acting like she's very grateful and respectful of the Snow White source material. But earlier this year, we saw the real Rachel, the one who complained about having to wear a dress while working, and saying she must be paid for every hour anything she's in is stream. I guarantee between the real headstrong, power-hungry version and this soft-spoken, thankful one, there was definitely a meeting where Disney sat her down and told her to just stop being a dumbass. Because like I've said in previous videos, a lot of actors today feel as if it's their moral duty to be activists almost as much as being actors. Look at people like Mark Ruffalo, who half the time doesn't even know what he's protesting against, but he feels like he has to anyway. And the other thing that is just plain stupid to see is how Rachel Zegler tries to paint the online hate she got as being unwarranted. But the truth is that what happened and the fallout of her statements can only be blamed on one person, which is herself, of course. None of the backlash she endured would have existed had she given respect to the fans. But in today's meta, that's not possible for many of these pretenders. You gotta pander, be an activist, and push the agenda at all times. The reactionary backlash of fans doesn't just up and exist out of nowhere. I hate it when I hear media types say things like fans are toxic when it comes to Star Wars or other properties like Ghostbusters. It's as Henry Cavill said when he was being interviewed for The Witcher before things went to hell. He doesn't view that toxic hate as others puts it, but he sees it as passion. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on 
Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. And he believes that fans are entitled to that passion always. Because unlike Zegler and the other weirdos who think it's the audience that is the problem, people like Henry Cavill understand that his job and his opportunities do not exist without the paying customer. Zegler believes she can be annoying and self-centered because she represents that part of Hollywood that feels obligated to your support even if they don't deserve it. They figure, well, they're making movies and you aren't, so naturally you're going to give your money to them even if you hate them because you want more movies to happen. The connection between the customer and the creators of today has never been more shaky, and it's why I always say that you should never attack your audience ever. For example, look at me. My channel doesn't exist without the thousands of viewers who tune in every video. I'm eternally grateful to the support I receive from everyone who even spends a second watching something I spent hours making. I gain nothing and would only lose my opportunity to pursue my dream job, which is this by the way, if I tell my audience they're wrong and disrespect them. Like Henry Cavill said, you're nothing without the support of the people who are invested in these sorts of things. I don't feel entitled to your viewership or support and I have to actively work every day to ensure that I'm worthy of it. Rachel Zegler and those like her feel like they're entitled to it and that's where this whole online hate as she puts it comes from. It's also interesting how she words things. Let's watch a clip of her during this Variety interview where she claims she was a big fan of Disney cartoons and Snow White. Then I'll show you a clip of her speaking more honestly from earlier this year and you tell me. So let's watch. Um, Cause it's hard being women under the spotlight. People are so critical mm. and just say anything that they would never say to your face. No. So yeah, how has that been for you being able to navigate it? You know, choosing thankfulness and yes. gratefulness is choosing peace. And as much as you'd like to remind people verbally that yes. being in the spotlight doesn't absolve you of your humanity, that you're allowed to have human moments. Yes. It doesn't necessarily do what you want it to do and it fuels yeah. them more. Yes, exactly. I feel so thankful for those moments mm -hmm. because it started to make me feel like solid Teflon. Yes. <laughs> that it can't really, that nothing can hurt anymore Amen. because they've said the worst that can be said and mm -hmm. you just kind of say, thank you so much for this. <laughs> I have a lot of love in my life. Yes. And I'm very thankful. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. That the cartoon was made 85 years ago and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power. I mean, definitely pressure. The cartoon's so beloved. It's like a monumental moment in film history. Yeah. It was like the first feature length cartoon yeah. movie. Disney cartoons, I'm one of them. Mm. You know, I I love uh, the everything that the Disney company has put out. I just mean that it's no longer 1937 and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. But now suddenly she's always been a fan and she apparently loves the property. She's lying to you is what's happening here. It's very obvious between then and now she's had some training when it comes to conducting herself in interviews. Because if anything, the Rachel Zegler we see currently is more of an act than the real her. We already know she doesn't care about Snow White and wanted to pump the film full of feminist agenda nonsense. But Disney has been course correcting the entire film since due to her moronic statements. And now the film has a budget of around $300 million, which means it needs to make around $700 million in order to break even. The Little Mermaid, which had a fraction of the controversy Snow White had, only managed to make around $550 million which ended up causing the film to not turn a profit in theaters. The likelihood that this Snow White film bombs is almost absolutely going to happen. I don't see this film making anywhere near what Little Mermaid did, and I genuinely expect Snow White to do the Marvel's levels in terms of performance, if not worse. And this is the result of the ever-growing rejection of fans walking away from things that are deemed politically charged. ThatParkPlace.com had an article earlier this week speaking on how Disney has abandoned the family unit by pushing politically charged messaging. But I wager it's not just Disney, but every company across the board that's suffering due to the same reasons. Too many things are politically designed to push messages these days, and oftentimes it's towards kids. And when it's not political nonsense, it's degeneracy, with places like Twitch allowing streamers to essentially showcase softcore streams where these female streamers stand topless. And some may say, so what? But the truth is that places like Twitch and services like Disney, Warner Bros, and more, they are heavily supported by and consumed by children. 
And the screwed up reality here is that everything these days has some underlying message at its core. It's like how earlier this year fans got annoyed when the children's show Transformers Earthspark claimed that Transformers are non-binary and use pronouns like they, them. But Transformers are robots, and like Elon Musk who replied to this post said, computers are literally binary. But that's not the point, is it, to these people, because everything must be politicized and made to push some sort of message. When it came to Snow White's remake in its original super woke form anyway that is getting changed because of backlash, Disney attempted to make the dwarves into seven magical creatures with varying identities and genders. This was done simply to push messages and because Disney knows the core audience of a film like this is of course going to be children. And since a lot of these weirdos refuse to have children themselves, which thank god for that by the way, they instead need other ways to ensure the future is filled with people like them. And if they aren't willing to have children themselves, the only alternative is to indoctrinate and radicalize the children of other people. And since parents will often do anything they can to ensure their kids calm down and don't run around the house like Sonic the Hedgehog, they'll just put a colorful show on and those kids will sit there and watch this sort of stuff without the parents knowing. And in those quiet moments when the parents aren't present, that's where predators tend to strike upon these impressionable young minds. And that's why this is how it is. It's really why so many young people these days have victim mindsets and we've only seen the tip of this iceberg. And once these people are old enough to run for Congress or make meaningful impacts in our world, the common sense of the ordinary human will be thrown out the window and the cycle will just continue. Thankfully, in a lot of ways, these sorts of things are failing across the board. But it's still too early to see the results yet. According to ThatParkPlace.com, Disney's viewership numbers across the board have dropped around 14% which of course means less ad revenue, so maybe to some extent parents are thankfully becoming more aware of what these companies are trying to do. Then again, places like Disney openly admitted in recent reports that this push for diverse pandering doesn't work. They said via a report, and I quote, Generally, our revenues and profitability are adversely impacted when our entertainment offerings and products, as well as our methods to make our offerings and products available to consumers, do not achieve sufficient consumer acceptance. Further, consumers' perceptions of our position on matters of public interest, including our efforts to achieve certain of our environmental and social goals, often differ widely and present risks to our reputation and brands." End quote. And this is all because these corporations are no longer interested in creating content made for children. And in doing so, they've lost the family unit when it comes to viewership. And places like Disney, for example, chase the millennials and Gen Zers with content they believe will resonate with them which is why things that should be made for kids only have turned into this weird dual audience. And the kids shows are not really made for kids, but really for adult babies who are emotionally stunted growing up. And whether we like to admit it, the media we consume as a society helps shape the current and future generations. I grew up watching shows like Saved by the Bell or Everybody Loves Raymond, and cartoons like Blue's Clues or Everybody's Favorite Punching Bag in the form of Caillou. Most of these shows were made to push values like having children and keeping a close family unit. By instilling these values, it helped more families to have more children, ensuring generations kept going. But these days, most programming is designed to worship things like being single and alone, having no kids, and pushing surface-level buzzwords that change meaning all the time. What these entertainment giants like Netflix or Disney have done is change their priorities. And in doing so, they no longer chase the family unit or push strong values, and it's very clearly having an adverse effect on our generations right now. And as that Park Place points out, places like Disney actually incentivize their female employees to not have children by offering them full services bought and paid for in order to get rid of their pregnancies. Which might sound good to the progressive activists with thick rim glasses and a septum piercing, but the truth is that by promoting and allowing these behaviors to be rewarded, it's going to obviously push more female employees to just not have kids. And the less kids that are born in general, technically speaking for entertainment empires, that's a really bad thing for business. Because without new kiddos being born, the future generations will obviously lessen. And the lesser demographic, not only can't you indoctrinate enough people, there just won't be enough to pander to anyway. So your revenues go down, your views plummet, and it's because these companies are pushing these core values that don't actually benefit future generations or their corporations either. Obviously, I'm not saying women shouldn't have autonomy of their bodies, they should. But advocating for female employees to abort their pregnancies by incentivizing them to work more, that just spells doom for our future as well. 
And it doesn't help that Gen Zers don't want kids of their own and instead want to just party and drink their lives away. Since they've been conditioned by the media they consumed growing up telling them that the world is terrible and climate change is going to kill them all anyway. So how do you expect a better future when the content being made is only being used to indoctrinate and ruin the potential futures of millions of young people? It's a big reason why I'm so vocal on ensuring enough people gain some semblance of common sense back into their heads. And letting people know there is still hope in a world that's been painted as nothing but oppressively dark by others. And like I've said a few times in other videos, things like overpopulation are almost always pushed by people who have multiple kids themselves. Who tell you that in order to save the planet you gotta live in a pod and eat bugs and not have children or drive cars. While these same people in power have multiple kids of their own, fly in private jets and own multiple mansions and beach homes. You're being lied to by an elite group in order to ruin the future of this world. The most radical thing you can do these days, weirdly enough, is to embrace the values your grandparents likely had growing up. Having children, getting married, and choosing to eat real steak instead of a grasshopper sandwich are just a few things that are considered taboo in today's modern world. And I don't know about you, but I will not listen to the opinions of people who tell me how I live is wrong. Especially when these same people can't even tell me with confidence what their gender even is. And as always, these companies are virtue signaling while doing the exact opposite almost always. Recently, it was reported that Disney was caught in a class action lawsuit where around 9,000 female employees who work for the media giant found out that they were being paid less than their male counterparts and again, this is from a company that pushes progressive values. And like I've always said, companies do not have morals do, they just have priorities. The official report claims Disney has been gaslighting us for four years and today they were proved wrong. This case is not about nine individual plaintiffs, it's about all the women in California who work for Disney and who are fed up of being paid less than their male counterparts and who are seeking fair treatment, that's all. Of these 9,000 women, one of them is a manager at Disney named LaRonda Ramusin, who said she was being paid 2% less than her male counterparts, to which LaRonda said, I think Disney's defense is going to break down because here's what they're trying to say. Oh well, she should be paid less because of blah blah blah, because if you do that in front of a jury, you're dead. There's no way that's going to be acceptable to a California jury in 2024. One of the lawyers for this lawsuit said this, These are important cases for reducing the wage gap and exposing discriminatory pay practices. We are honored to represent the brave women who have come forward to tell the stories of so many women who are treated like cheap labor. We are pleased that the judge saw through Disney's tactics, fairness is the goal. And the final part of this report says that there's another lawsuit being filed against Disney specifically that violates the California Fair Employment and Housing Act, which affects another 12,000 female employees. And all I see from this nonsense is that you got these companies and you got activists like Zegler all speaking out of one side of their mouth, while thinking or doing something that immediately contradicts what they've been saying. And congrats to Disney for injecting tons of diversity and gender equality across their offices, since it ended up resulting in likely millions if not billions in damages once it's all said and done. But as you can see, when you go woke, you definitely go broke. Rachel Zegler's apology tour that paints fans as toxic will not win anyone back. And corporations are too hell-bent on indoctrination that it's causing millions to walk away and I don't blame them. But always remember that this is the future they wanted and now that the repercussions are coming, there's no one to blame but themselves. But as always, thank you for watching dear viewer and subscribe, like the video and share if you enjoyed it. Thanks to my patrons as always for their support and please take care of yourselves. Drink plenty of water and keep your mind clear and I'll see you in the next one.